Hey there guys! General, what the hell are you filming your desk for this time? Well, remember I did that Infamous 2 Hero Edition unboxing video? Well, I'm gonna be doing another one. But General, of what game are you going to be doing that one? Well... The Soul Calibur 5 Collector's Edition. Got it today. So, yeah, let's see what's inside it, but first... I got this with it. Pre-order code for extra character Dampier. See what's that say? Just look at this beautiful mustache. Well, it is a beautiful mustache, alright. No arguing about that. Really happy I got this guy when I pre-ordered it because it's not known when he's going to be available in the PSN store and Xbox Live and stuff. And I got him for free by pre-ordering. When he becomes available for download, I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to pay like five bucks for him. I mean, you had to pay five bucks for D Yoda and Darth Vader in Soul Calibur 4. So I guess when he, whenever he comes out, he's gonna cost five bucks again. So I'm just happy I got him already. Alright, so first of all, the collector's edition, the cover. It's got main character Patroclus and main bad guy Nightmare on it. And this game's guest character, Ezio from Assassin's Creed. Yeah, Soul Calibur has to have a guest character like every game for some reason. Soul Calibur 2 had Link, Hihachi from Tekken, and Spawn from some obscure comic. Soul Calibur 3 was supposed to have Dante from Devil May Cry, but that never came through for some reason. Soul Calibur 4 had Darth Vader, Yoda, and Starkiller from The Force Unleashed. I don't know why the hell they chose them. I mean, they, if there's one or three characters that don't fit in at all, it's them. And for this one, they went with Ezio from Assassin's Creed. And I'm just... I'm not particularly... I'm kind of indifferent about Assassin's Creed, but... At least he fits in better than Darth Vader and Yoda and freaking Starkiller. So yeah, that's the front. Basically made by Namco. 16 plus So let's examine the back It's on it uh -huh. Picture of Ezio fighting series veteran Mitsurugi some pictures Content we'll get to that in a minute And right now we need to get it out because it's in some kind of weird It kind of looks like a book That's pretty sweet actually, but we need to get it out with one hand Come on. Come on. God damn it. Uh, hold on. Let me just uh, put down the phone for a moment. Jesus. there we go you would not believe how hard it is to get this out of this it shouldn't be that hard that's what she said anyway this is nice it looks like a really old book it's even got the fake page looking design this is awesome now what's inside here we have the making of DVD all right the hell is this piece of paper looks like some kind of letter except it's not a letter just meant to look like an envelope and what does it say dear fighting soul we are honored to present you with this special collector's edition of soul caliber 5 if you have bought this then it means that you are probably as much a fan of soul caliber as we are it is in our blood and our souls, and we have poured all our passion into creating this game for you. Soul Calibur 5 would not exist without you, our fans. Before we started Soul Calibur 5, the Project Soul team had completely disbanded and the adventure was over. But the sheer desire from the fans for a new opus brought us back together. Since then we have had only one thought in our minds, to deliver a new game worthy of this great series and our fans' dedication. To do this... We challenged ourselves at every stage and on every level to deliver something beyond what you expect. 
You have a new era to learn about, new characters to meet, and new gameplay elements that raise the intensity and thrill of the fights both online and offline. We hope you love this game, we're always listening to what you have to say, so please keep talking to us and keep following this legendary series. We're not done with it yet. Yours faithfully, Daishi Odashima Director Bisaharu Kago Producer Make your voice heard at facebook.com slash soulcalibur and talk to game director Daishi Odashima on Twitter. Alright, kind of thank you note for basically buying the 80 bucks special edition as opposed to the 60 bucks regular game. Alright, what else do we have? We have a piece of character artwork signed by the Project Soul team of main character Patroclus. Okay. And then we have an art book. Is that uh, just advertising for Facebook? Alright, let's take a look at the art, shall we? See if I can get this in the picture nicely. Table of contents. Alright, here's Patroclus. See if I can read the bios. I really need to sit in a place with better lighting. Here, how about this? This may be a bit better. Alright, Patroclus. Age 19. Birthplace Athens. He's 177 centimeters tall. He's taller than me. Weight refuses to reveal. Why? Uh -huh, yada yada. Relations, his sister Pera was kidnapped. Her mother Sophia was killed by a Malfastin and his father Rothian died from illness. Ooh, troubled family history there. And some artwork. Looks pretty nice. Obviously I have a talented artist for this project. Oh. And there's my computer going ape shit, in case you can uh, hear it. I really need to get a new one. Okay, here's a sister Pera. Age 20. 165 centimeters. Yay, I'm taller than her. She has no one who she can call her family since she has wandered among various people throughout her life. Since she was kidnapped, I guess. Alright, that looks... Pretty nice, decent facial expressions. Up next is Viola. What the hell? Some kind of sorceress? Okay, guess the realism kind of gets thrown out the window here. What the hell is weather? Data, age 24, tricolor stars. Birthplace, a place of roses and lilies. Day of prayer to Vesta. Twisted strings of red and blue for blood type. Weapon orb. Fighting style, Ars Planetarium. Seriously? Ars Planetarium? Ray Ships doesn't remember where she came from, but she's traveling with Swai for now. And Swai is that guy, but I think I skipped a page. Yeah. That well, looks good. But wait a minute. See the difference? Between the artwork and the render. Look at the artwork. Her boobs are much bigger than in the render. Freaking pervert artists. Seriously, Japan. Okay, this is the Tsui guy. And he has some kind of freaking werewolf thing. Looks like a floating robot with a wolf head. And he also has a sword. Alright. Age unknown. Birthplace unknown. Date of birth, blood type, all unknown. Relationship, he does not talk about them. Guess it's complicated. Alright. Looks alright. This is Natsu. This is pretty much the replacement of Soul Series veteran Taki. 17. Mm-hmm. Taki student... She harbors the great demon Ahara Baki within her. Alright. Mm-hmm. This is Ziba. Or Xiba, however the hell you pronounce it. 16 Gs. The characters keep getting younger with every game. Basically the Keelik replacement or something. He's traveling with Maxi, La Lazia, and Natsu. And he looks like a monkey. 
And he's eating in his official artwork. I guess he's going to be a pretty annoying character. Okay, here's Lei Jia. Pretty much the replacement for Chiang Hua. 15. Uh -huh, her mother is Chiang Hua. Alright. Kind of looks just like her, to be quite honest. And then we have Maxi. Favorite Elvis lookalike swinging nunchucks. Age older than he looks. Why so vague? Hey, 174 centimeters is just as tall as me. And he weighs as much as me as well. The past remains in the past. Jeez, why does no one want to talk about their relations? Alright, standing on his nunchucks. He's as badass as always. Siegfried, the main character of the first five games. Age 40. Well, he's getting old. Uh, family, he killed his father and his mother died of natural causes. Complicated. Kind of reminds me of the story of Oedipus. Right, he looks badass as always. I like Siegfried. He always has like sweet armor and a big sword. Ooh, Nightmare, the big cheese himself. Age unknown, birthplace unknown. Everything's unknown except he weighs a crap ton. 152 kilograms, jeez. Uh-huh, relationships. Ingratiated himself to Rudolf II, the Holy Roman Emperor, as Graf Dumas. Okay, apparently this nightmare plays a political game. And he looks as sweet as ever. I mean, damn, that's some nice artwork. I like Nightmare, he always has badass designs. Mitsurugi. 46, he's also getting really old. I mean, okay, these games take place in, like, what, the 17th century? Did people even get close to, like, 40? Pretty sure they all died of some horrible disease before they got, like, 40 or 50. Uh -huh. His parents and brothers were all taken by sickness, but a martial artist is claiming to be his eighth brother. Jeez, people breeding like rabbits back in the day. And yeah, he looks he's the badass old man. Pretty cool. Ooh, Volo, the resident oddball of the series. He's 67. Yeah. 67 year old man. Really creepy. His parents and brothers all died in war. His master is virtue should be long dead. Is he not long dead then? And he's got some creepy like spider outfit on. I mean, look at that crotch plate. Got a spider face crotch plate. That is creepy. But pretty awesome. One of his best outfits to date, I must say. Tira. Some wacky girl with a hula hoop blade. Again, lots of things are unknown. I'm not too fond of Tira. I've always found her an annoying character since she was introduced in Soul Calibur 3. And then we have Hilda. Introduced in Soul Calibur 4, age 35. It's a lance and a sword. And apparently was pretty damn broken in Soul Calibur 4. I never noticed. Looks pretty nice. At least she kind of breaks the mold of every Soul Calibur female looking like a freaking floozy. Like Ivy. Just had to talk about it. She is age stopped at 32. Yeah, because Japan hates women over 30. Her adoptive uh, real father is Cervantes. And she's actually started wearing more clothes in comparison to Soul Calibur 4. I mean, she was like next to naked in that game. And now she's kind of covering up a bit more. Speaking of Cervantes, he's no longer a zombie for some reason. 44, 12 years since he acquired a new body. Okay, I wonder if that's explained in, like, story mode or whatever. Antonio is his second in command. He commands his crew with fear. Ivy is his daughter. Alright. And he's a badass pirate drinking something in his official artwork. Well, I guess I'm kind of glad he's no longer a purple-skinned zombie. I mean, he looks good now. Yoshimitsu. Oh, speaking of oddball characters like Voldo, here's another one. Uh huh. He was raised by Yoshimitsu the first. Wait, so this is Yoshimitsu the second or something? Huh, I wonder what's up with that. 
Wait, that's the helmet Yoshimitsu wore in Soul Calibur 4. Why is it all broken looking and why is he standing over it? Did he kill Yoshimitsu the first? Oh well, Raphael will never like this douchebag. Age 32. Pretty sure was a vampire in the last game, so he doesn't really age anymore. Looks like Zoro. A bit, with the hat and all, and the rapier. But it looks kind of nice, I guess. Ooh, Astaroth, one of my favorite guys. Pretty much a Frankenstein-esque monster with a giant axe. Age newly created. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Any more Astaroth are being created. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to say many. Great, the art book has a typo. Alright. You would not want to mess with this guy. Because he is badass. Then we have Eon. Formerly known as Lizard Man. Apparently he goes by Eon now. Age unknown. 24 years has passed since he was human. Mm-hmm. Pretty tall. Like, at least two meters tall. Jeez. And he's changed his weapon style a bit. In Soul Calibur 4, he had an axe and a shield, and now he has two axes. So that's pretty awesome. And he doesn't have any relations either. And apparently he has wings. Okay. That's new. He didn't have those in Soul Calibur 4. Wonder how that's gonna play out. Interesting, though. And then we have Dampierre, the pre-order guy. Oh yeah, his profile and stuff is hilarious. Sex, just look at this beautiful mustache. Age, I believe you already went over this. Birthplace, I don't know. Take a look at my long and nimble legs, although yours are better. Nice. So you want to know my deep, dark secrets? Date of birth, is not really the question you want to ask. Blood type, I would love to talk about our future after this ball. Alright. Weapon. Are you insinuating that I use a hidden dagger? That's just a malicious rumor. Uh, yeah. Very malicious rumor. Uh, weapon name. Convenient rumor and fake gold. Fighting style last resort. I love this guy. He's awesome. He's hilarious. Just look at him. He's all smug with his mustache and his coins. Can't wait to play as this guy, because he was introduced in Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, the PSP port of Soul Calibur 4, which I never played because I didn't have a PSP. So this is going to be my first time using him, and I'm kind of wondering what he plays like. And Ezio, the guest guy. Uh -huh. Age 47, oh, he's actually among the older characters in the game. Relationships Auditore. Is that his last name or something? I don't know, I never played Assassin's Creed 2, and here's the track list for the soundtrack, which is also included in the edition thingy, but I don't have the CD anymore because it's already in my car, which is currently in the driveway. And it's not the complete soundtrack, it's more like a couple of tracks of it. Like the first few songs are character themes, and then it's like music from previous Soul Calibur games, remade or something, which are offered as paid DLC. Of course. Alright, so that's the art book. And then we have the game itself. Front and back are the same as that box over there. And that's basically it. There should be a DLC code for some customization equipment somewhere. Maybe it's in the box. Hold on, let me check. Yep, found it. Here it is. Get like two sweet looking armor suits that I'm not sure are going to be made available on uh, PSN and stuff. Because the DLC from Soul Calibur 4's Collector's Edition was never made available. Well, not in countries where they had the Collector's Edition at least. It came out in Europe because we didn't have the Collector's Edition, but we have now. So I'm guessing these will never see the light of day. Or they might, but you have to pay a hefty sum for them. And there's the disc and stuff. And that is where the soundtrack went before I put it in my car. 
So yeah, that's basically all there is to it to the Soul Calibur 5 Collector's Edition. Hope you liked it. And I will be making a lot of videos off of this one. Remember my Soul Calibur 4 character, the custom character videos? I'm going to be doing those again. And I'm also going to be doing an LP of the story mode, because this game actually has a story mode, which Soul Calibur 2, 3, and 4 pretty much lacked. So yeah, going to do an LP of the story mode and make lots of custom characters. In fact, you can send your suggestions for custom characters that I should make. Like, send them to me in a PM or something. Include links to artwork. So, I've kind of been thinking about doing things differently with the customization thing this time around. I want to be... I want to make, like, two outfits for every character I make. Like, say I make... Uh, think of something... Say I make Kratos from God of War. I'm going to make like one outfit like how he always looks like with just his belt and the sandals and the arm guards and stuff. And then maybe make his player 2 outfit his God of War armor from God of War 2 or something. So every character I make will have two outfits. And if a character does not have a second outfit that is known in any form of media or whatever... And I guess I'll have to design one myself. Yes, let loose a little creativity. But, yeah, there you go. You know my plans for this game now. Hope you're getting excited. Probably gonna do like the custom character thing on Sunday. When there's no LP episodes. But I do need to get my HD PVR up and running and get a new computer first before that starts to happen. But... I still need to unlock all the all the weapons and equipment and stuff, so it's going to be a while before this gets up and running. Just so you know. Hope you enjoyed these past 20 minutes, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.